Okay, I'm going to go through the slides, and then after, after the slides, I'm going to go back and go through what your lab should look like. Again, I was going to demonstrate it on the board, but I didn't. I did. I forgot that this room doesn't have a power plug on this side here, so there's really no easy way to do it unless well, I might be able to do it if I carry the laptop over to that <laughs> to that side of the room to plug the board in. But I didn't bring the EC adapter. Okay, let me just kind of go through these slides. And these slides are ones that I've used for a long time, and they're, they're actually, as a matter of fact, I still got the wrong course number, ECT146, this is the course number I had this for in Purdue, so, <laughs> that there. So, which actually, as it turns out, that course is, is the advanced digital course. But this is hierarchical design techniques, and I went through this before the break, and I just wanted to kind of go through it again. And we're going to go through this here again. This is we're going to have. This is a circuit that has multiple projects or multiple files in it with the Altera software. And this is more of an advanced technique, but it's the way that you would normally design any complex system. But there, is, we would break it up into smaller pieces. That there, and I'm, as I said, I'm going to go through the same circuit as I went through before. So you'll hear the term top down. That there. Basically what we're doing is we're taking a large project and we're breaking it up into smaller projects. This is done not only in hardware, for digital systems, it's done in larger analog systems, it's done in computer programs, it's done in pretty much any type of project management up there. So if you're building a bridge, for example, you would have one team that would lay the foundation, one team that would work on the stress trusses, one team that would work on setting up the, you know, you know, the, the road surface, another team would be doing various parts. I have not designed any bridges, but I, when I took my professional engineer's exam, I had to study that there, but if you build a building, you'd have one team that would work on the electrical, one team that would work on the, well, maybe not so much in Malaysia, but in the U.S., you would have a team that would work on HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning, that there, but in most modern buildings, office buildings, there's a at least central air conditioning ventilation system put into it. Obviously, in this campus, there isn't too that there, but uh, most homes in, in Western countries have central heat and central air conditioning. So you'd have a team that did that, you'd have a team that would do the plumbing that there. So you have multiple teams that work on various parts that there. In digital systems, we have the same thing. So each subsystem or subdesign is built and tested separately that there, you developed that there. Um, in this particular one, it's a relatively simple one, and one person or one lab team can do the whole thing. I've worked on projects where we may have 30 engineers assigned to a particular project. That's actually a very large project if we have 30 engineers assigned to it. Most projects were, were groups of 5 to 10. That was the average size project that there. But some of the military projects that I've been kind of part of off and on over the, over the decades, there might be 20 or 30 of us total on the project. One part of the team might work on, say, the communications between the Santa Bowie and the aircraft, and the dive bar on the aircraft. One set of the team might be working on the underwater acoustics part of the hydrophones. One set of part of the team may be just doing things such as battery design. You know, so you have multiple subparts back there. Back there. And then when, we, when we're dealing with uh, Portis here, we have two ways to do it. We got to either use the text design or use the graphical editor. In this course, we're only going to worry about using the graphical editor. Since this is not a course in VHDL or Verilog, we'll just use the graphical editor here in this class. So, there. All right, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna just do a four bit adder. And I'm gonna just go through this, these are the steps that, that we're going to use. And, and as I said, I went through and over the break, I pulled up my old slides, kind of went through there. And I thought I updated with the, with the right course number, but every time I forgot to do that first slide. I, I took, off, took, took, took off my Fort Wayne office phone number and that office number there, the office hours off the first slide. Never gonna change the course number. Regardless, we're going to create a 4-bit adder, but we're going to do that by creating two 
subsimilars, subsurface. We're going to have a half adder and a full adder. Again, we did this before the break. I'm just repeating the process. But they're just there because I don't expect you to go into the lab next on Thursday and remember what we did two weeks prior at there. That's why I'm repeating it there. <laughs> so we create default symbols right there. Again, you'll find the circuit. I, I put the note find the circuit in the book. I actually put the circuit in these slides so that so that you don't have to look through because you don't even know what book it is. The uh, actually it's not the Tochi book. It's another book that, that we use for one. I use for one another. And we'll create the project for the half adder and the full adder, and then we're going to use the top top there. And we'll connect them up as done in that my other course. We won't, we'll simulate that there. And again, we won't, you know, the circuits are shown in the slide, so, so we don't have to go through that there. This is the design for the half adder, that there. And I'm going to, uh, take a break here and I'm going to pull up the, the software right here and hopefully I can find it here the Altera software right here and I'm going to do this from, from scratch right there I'm going to create a new project that there now these slides will probably have the wrong part number as you recall we'll have to create a new project and I'm going to go ahead and create a new project do this from scratch here again right there and I'm going to put it under design you can put it anywhere you want here I'm going to create it up there and I'm just going to call it digital lab 2 right there open and the name of the project is Digital Lab 2, right there. And I'm going to say existing pro right there. Actually, this is the one where I can unplug in order to get to the finish. I'm just going to, I just hit finish there. If you hit finish, it should remember the, 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 the device that was used last. And what happened here? Okay, so if I go to project assignments device, and that was that is the right device, so that there, so so it's going to remember that if I go to pin options, if I go to unused pins. I'll put grout input try say we need to go ahead and set that. And unfortunately, as I said, I have to keep on plugging this if I do if I work on this. I'm not going to do anything with that right now. I'm just going to stop the simulation right there. So, so all right. Now, what we're going to do here, and I'm going to go back and forth between the slides here. This is our circuit right there. right here and I'm just going to go ahead and enter that there and enter the design I'm going to have A, B, C, A, B is the input and sum and C out as the output so I'm just going to go ahead and enter that design right there and then after we enter the design we're going to create the default symbol so I'm going through the slides which I'm going to post online at the same time I'm going through the, go, go through the steps so let me go back to the Cordis software and we're going to do create a new block schematic file right there and we need an XOR right there and we need an AND two right there we need two inputs Right there. I'm going to move this a little further away. Put. 
right here. So there's our basic, and again, I'm going to, that looks like our, our circuit right there, right there, so so I've given, so there's the circuit for the, for the half adder, so at this point right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to file save as, and this is where things get tricky because you've got to be very careful here, because the reason I say you've got to be careful is because this is going to want to default to the top level entity name. We have we're going to have three different files for this project. One is going to be the top entity, which is going to be called Digital Lab Two. One is called Half Adder, and one is called Full Adder. So we need to make sure we save these names properly. So I'm going to call this Half Adder, right there, right here. Now at this point here is where I say in the design. In, in my slides, just go ahead and create the default symbol right there. Create default symbol right there. Right here, default, create symbol file for current file right there. And half add it right there. So now it's created that symbol. And I can verify, if I want to test this circuit, I can go ahead and do this at this point. However, there's a few hoops I need to do to you know, when I say hoops, I don't know if that term means anything. There's a, I have to do a couple of things first. And the first thing I need to do is I have to tell the software to make this the top level of my project. That there, and then compile. You know, in my slides I don't say to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Because normally you would test these sub-projects, sub-designs before you go carry on. So, under assignments, here, actually, file, and if I can find it here, should be under project, okay, project, set at top entity. This is telling the software that this is going to be the top level of my design for, for compiling purposes right there. So I'm going to go ahead and set this as the top level, then I can compile it. If I don't do that, it'll give me an error saying it can't find top in it. Right there. It's going to give me some warnings here. Got there. Right there. And since we're not going to build this, I'm not going to worry about setting the pins or anything. But all we're going to do is test it. And our errors are all going to, if we look at our warnings, the same, ignore assignments for there, at there. Because we, we have not built top our digital design too, so we're going to give a warning for that right there. That there. So, so it's got a warning for that. It's got a warning for feature logic clock. Well, we're always going to get this unless we spend three, four thousand dollars for the full software package, or whatever it is. We're going to get a warning because we haven't assigned our pins yet. And then we're going to get another warning for we haven't set the output capacitance. And then our last warning is we have, we've we left our reserve volume pins has not been specified. And we would definitely do that before we build this. So at this point, we're, we could go through and we could simulate this. Is that my phone or someone else's? You know, I ought to just shut mine off. Every now and then I get some fool that wants to call me <laughs> in the middle of class. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and test this. And in order to test this, and the slides don't show us testing this, but that there, but I need to go ahead and create new our vector waveform file. That's part of our our, our that there. 
close this because I don't have any room on my screen. Edit. And again, this is just automatic end time. I always just set to like five microseconds. For this particular case, it doesn't. The most important one is the grid size. We need to make that 50. You can make it 100 if you want, but 50. And then node finder list. Here's our four pins right there. We're going to group these two together. Group, input, right there. Then value, and it's going to be a count value. And you can see there that that's they look that's what you would get. And if you show at there, you can ungroup them at this point. Actually, you don't have to leave them grouped if you don't want to. I just, I, I the only reason I group them is so that I don't have to go through and draw the waveforms one by one. It just saves a lot of time to group them and just put them to do a count. And we know that we cover all combinations right there. So at this point here, we go ahead and we just do a save. And I'm going to leave this name the same right there. In this particular case, I'm going to leave this name the same right there. But we're going to have to delete this file every time. So at this point, we go ahead and simulate it. And what we're going to see here is our output, our carry out. Our output is going to be a 1 whenever A and B, A or B are high, it's going to be a low. So our outputs look okay. We do have some glitches show up here if we were to, you can see there's a short little place where it's a little erroneous that there, that's just typical of, of this type of hardware. If we were actually to test it, you would see that if you, if you were that there, but if you look at this time difference, right here you know this time right this time right here is 105 nanoseconds and right here it's 105.5 so that's less than half a nanosecond that that glitch would appear so you're not going to see that in the lab right there your eyes have to be pretty sharp right there so so that that's basically our simulation of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this file out because this file is not needed anymore. Let's go ahead and do the full app right there. So our next thing is we're going to repeat this process. It is again a block diagram schematic file. And I'm going to go back to my slides. right there and what should F5 oh. right here this is our at their end there's no easy way of doing this other than you then I'm going to have to go back and forth between the two that that there so but this is our circuit here right here and this is the simplified version of the circuit I think I did a much more complex one last time because I went through and just did a some of products right there but we we've got here two AND gates an XOR and two XOR so let's go through and try to draw this and this is where it would be nice if I oh let's see you know what I'm going to do I just turn my phone off and I'm going to turn it back on so that I can pull the circuit down and look at the phone. <laughs> yeah, all, all's fair and cheating, right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. No sense trying to do it from memory and, and making all kinds of mistakes. Here. Give it a second here. There. Mm 
All right. Give me a second here and we'll... just start drawing here. So we've got coming into this here, we need two or three inputs, input, three of them. We're going to input A, B, and carry in. Right there. And we have
now, now I can see it on the on the phone here. So it's XOR. We need one down here. We need an and two, two of those, two. Here, here, and we need a four two here. We need two options. One here, one here, and here's the tricky part. I need to try to connect these all up. Right here. Okay, that looks right. And this one goes to right there. Normally, you don't use your phone. You wouldn't be copying for something as small as a phone, but you'll have your you'll have these slides that you can copy from <laughs> up there. So, all right. Then this goes to Okay, I think that's right. Anybody's got photographic memory? Does that look anything like this? <laughs> it looks right to me. I'm going to go with it. We'll find out when we run the simulation whether it's right or not. <laughs> Out there, that's usually the easiest thing to do. So this is A, B, and carry in. A, B, carry in. And this on the output. Let's carry out on the top. And so, okay, okay. There, there's our circuit. Hopefully, it's correct. We'll find out in a few minutes. Right there. So we again, we're going to go ahead and let's do a save as. This time, it's full adder. Same, same issue as we had before. It's going to want to default to digital circuit two. We'll add her. Let's go ahead and tell it to create the symbol file for that. We'll add her. All right. Created. Now let's go ahead and make this the top and en en level entity so that we can simulate it right there. 
So now in this particular case, we're going to have to open our vector waveform file right here. And we're going to delete everything. The reason we're going to delete everything is because we changed our top level. Actually, we haven't recompiled it. We need to recompile it. Right there. And we're going to get the same type of warnings that we got before. Only this particular time we're going to have five pins instead of four pins because we had carry in to deal with. We have two output pins, so we get the same warnings right there. Right there. So now we can go through here and node finder, list all of our pins. You know, now we see the all of our pins there again, we do the same thing. These are our three inputs. Group them again. Grouping. Input. Right there, and then do a count. Right there. Oh, that's that's a clock. Okay, that looks better. And. We can see we go through right there. So now we can run our simulation. We're going to go ahead and save that and run our simulation. Simulation is successful. And let's look to see whether or not that makes sense. Zero, 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 we should have zero out. If we have a carry in, we should have a sum out up there. If we have B in, B is high, the output should be high, our carry out should be low. If we have two ones here, our out our sum should be high, but our or our carry out should be high, but our sum should be low, that's correct, right? Here we've got one input A is high, B and the carry in are low, our sum should be high, but our carry out is is right. And as we can see, we should be able to look here. Here our sum is high. Here our sum A is high and the carry in is high, so our sum should be low and our carry out should be high. That's correct. This should be the same. And then the only place they should all both be high is when it's one one right there. One one one. All three are, are that there. So we so we got the right result. So we have the the right we went back and checked the truth table, we would see that that's correct. So that's, this is right. So at this point, we, we've got that all working here, up there. Now I'm going to go through here and we're going to now do our top level. And we're going to do a four bit right there. Now, before I do this, let me open up our symbols and look at that there. Right here, now. Our, as I recall, this one looks fine. Our carry out comes out the bottom. We can move this pin to the bottom here. Yeah. 
they won't let me do that. Okay, well, we won't, we won't move it that way. We'll leave it the way it is. We, we, we won't save this one. Let's open up uh, the full adder. The full adder is the one that I'm concerned about. Is that I want to move the just to make it easier to draw that there. So that there, all I do is just just move the carry out. So when it, when I draw it, I don't have to cross the lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, under project, we have the half adder. We'll put that in at, at the top, right here. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna put in three full adders. here. So there's our, our symbols right there. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding in all my inputs here and then my outputs. Now I'm going to spread these out a little bit to where I got enough room to. Because our carry out from this one goes to our, oh you know what, I want to re-edit that uh, I want to move right there Okay, again, I edited that file so that I can put the carry in at the top that there. So, so again, I'm just adding, editing the symbol. So now I can bring around here. So now I've connected all the carry outs to the carry ins right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in input. And we got a bunch of inputs to put in, so we're just going to start putting them in. So there's all of our inputs. Let's go ahead and connect them up. We're going to cheat. Right there. So there's all of our inputs there. So we drew all of our inputs. 
Well, let's go ahead. I'm going to name our inputs at this point. And the least significant bit is on top. The most significant bit is on the bottom right there. So this is going to be A0, B0, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3, B3, right there. So those are our inputs right there. Now let's go ahead and put our, put our carry out, or our sums out right there, so we need to have some outputs right there. We need one here. We need one here. We need one here. And we need two here. Right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect it this way. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and name them. This is S. Zero. This is S1, S2, S3, and carry, carry out. Right there. So there's our, those are all of our inputs right there. Let's go ahead and save this. This is our top level, so this is actually the one we want to be our final project. So we do a save right there. And then we make this the top level since we keep changing our top level, because this is our ultimate top level, this is our final project. We compile it right here. And now, okay. Now we're going to go through and simulate this, and then finally I'll go through it and we'll start assigning pins right there. As you can see, this is not a trivial project, right? <laughs> this will take you all Thursday's time, right? <laughs> right there. Okay. So let's go through it and simulate this again. Now simulating this is a little different. We're going to open up the... Uh, Again, we delete everything, and we put everything back in again. <coughs> List right here. Okay, now we're going to group these up a little bit different than we did before because I'm going to group A together, grouping, and group in bit order. In this particular case, the most significant bit, well, let's first off, let's group it here and just call it A right there. But what we want to do on A is oh, right here, right click this here and grouping that there, we want to make tell it that the least significant bit is on top. Well, you know what? Let's ungroup these and then flip them around here. Ungroup. All right, let's try this again. Most significant bit of the When you group these,
when you group these, you, you have to make sure that the most significant bit is on the top that there. Otherwise, when you when you run the, the run the simulation, the numbers don't make sense. They're in reverse order. So let's go ahead and let's just value count value, and I'm going to dig right there, right X, and just be. Just to be easy, I'm going to change this to hexadecimal right there. Right there, and we'll, we'll see the reason why we did that right there. And value count. And I'm going to increment this by two, and do this as hexadecimal as well. Right there, and That way you can see that the counts match up right there. And the reason the reason I did that is just simply because it's easier when we're when we're doing our sum to see whether or not two numbers added up are, are the right ones there. And I, and I did one added by actually I did them both added by one, but that's all right. We can we can play, play with that there. Now the only thing left is we need to group these three together for the output right there. Group and sum, and I'm going to tell it to do it as hexadecimal. That way we can right there. And I'm just going to minimize these right there because we don't necessarily right there. And what I'm going to do is just run the simulation and see whether or not these add up, and then we're going to play, change a few things here. Okay, we got a mess, right? Right here, and let's see what we've got. Oh, you know what we didn't do? I didn't change the time period right there. Let's go back to the original one here. Value, count value, timing changes to 50. That's why it, lo it looks like garbage, right? Because we're seeing the right there. And do the same thing here. Value, count value. Here I'm going to increment by two just so that, that there. And timing 50, okay. Right there. See, not now we're going to see some different numbers. So now let me run the simulation through again. All right. Let's just let's just look here. Three plus six is nine, right? Four plus eight is C. A plus 5 is F, C plus 6 is a 2 with a carry out, right there. So it looks like we're getting the right data out, right there. So, so we are adding up correctly, right there. E plus 7 is going to be a 5 with a carry out. Now let you, you can go through and check that there. So, so this does work fine as a, a theory. If we want to make our life a little simpler for those of us that don't want to think we could change those change those to uh, decimal outputs that there but, but that's fine okay I'm not going to go through this all today but let me just kind of point out what we want to do that there now somewhere I thought I'd put it on my desktop here. Maybe I didn't put it on the desktop here. Ah, uh, here's what I'm looking for. Okay, since we pick, since we know we picked the right chip, you know, now at this point we're going to go through here 
And what you're going to want to do, and we did this last time, and I, and I realize that a lot of us have slept since last time, and we've done other things, but uh, right here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to pick switch 0 through 3 for A and 4 through 7 for B right there. You would select, select those switches right there. And then your outputs you would select these LEDs right here for and the LEDs are assigned. Alright, here's the toggle switches. Right there. Here's the toggle switches, and there's the LEDs. You would select. You would select LEDs zero through three for the sums, and the carry out would be LED four. So you would assign those pins right there. And for example, the outputs I'm going to assign right here and right there so you so your next step would be to go to your view and a few assignments your pins and you would assign your locations right here and that's a lot easier for you to do than for me to do because I can't have two things on the screen at the same time but again you would pick Not, not the key here. In other words, you would pick for A0, you would pick N, N25. N, N25, right there. And you go through and sign the pins. You don't have to type the pin, just the, start with the N25 right there. A1 would be N26 and P25. N26 P25 A3 is AE14 AE14 D0, let's skip one and go to AD13, AD13, uh, AC13 and C13. A C thirteen C thirteen B three would be B thirteen. B thirteen right there. Or carry out. I'm going to put the carry out way down at the bottom right there. Y12. Y12. E twenty three and AF twenty three. AB twenty one, AC twenty two. 
Okay. That should assign all the pins. Compile it once more. Okay, I also need to unplug this to I I've got to sign the unused pins. And as I said, I don't have the plug adapter anyway, so I can't test it. Okay, at this point, I didn't bring the plug adapter on this, but this is my plug adapter right there. I would plug in the board and test it, but I don't, I don't think this will run, run off my... The DE0 run, will run off the computer, so you don't need the power supply. This one I don't believe does. I think I tried it before. No, no, no. Okay. We cannot test this here. Well, that's all right. That gives you something to do on Thursday, right? So, all right. That is the lab. Going back to my slides. Right there. Function F5. We went through and we did everything for all the 4 bit adder. That's exactly what I showed there. Now, notice I didn't edit the symbol that time, so I got the lines crossing right there. And I go through I go through all the steps here. I sign the pins. Now these pins are wrong. Don't use these pin assignments. That there, because these pins are for the DE0 board. The simulation, of course, I showed how to do the simulation. Right there. And you'll see the glitches, the propagation delays right there. And the lab is right there. Is, is, is right there as part of this slide. So again, you will turn in a, a lab report to that right there. And don't either show that. Actually, this class, when I taught it before, I was taught as an online class. So students were doing the doing this on their own. Right <laughs> there. So that that's today's that's today's lecture. Thursday's lab is right here. So, okay. With that said, I will stop.